Hello, it's me, Robin, with Simple Food, Simple Life. Today, we're going to give an old picture new life. Stick around. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for joining me today. Okay, here's the project I'm going to work on. This is a picture that I have had for many, many years. Actually, I, if I recall, I bought it at Target a long time ago, I think it was ten dollars. It came, uh, the picture came matted. I just really liked uh, the sweetness of the picture. So, and I've already taken this apart so I can show you. Uh, originally, I gotta be careful so I don't drop the glass out. It's dirty, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, set that there. Originally uh, the picture came with this. This is the original mat that came with it. Okay? Um, and in actuality I like the green. Green is uh, really probably one of my favorite colors. Uh, and it was very pretty and very sweet. Now at some point I in my infinite wisdom <laughs> decided that I wanted a black mat because for a while I had this picture covered up with another picture okay that I did not have a frame for so I thought well I don't want to spend the money to frame that um, that piece of art so I'm just gonna scavenge this frame and I just put that over the top of this picture and used it that way for many years <clears throat> well eventually I had the I had the um, the picture framed and um, so I was able to bring this back now at some point because I had the other picture in there I took some paper and I covered up just covered up the back of the frame and um, so that the mat would be black. But on the other side, this is the original. This is green. Okay? All right. Now, I have this hanging uh, I, in my bedroom right now, but I would like to put it in the living room because I have some other um, replicas of some other paintings, one by Marie Cassatt of Children on the Beach. I love the innocence of them, the beauty of them, those pictures. So this one, if you take this off, and this is always hidden by the mat, it says that this is, see if I can get you down there to see it, it says that this particular painting is called Letters by Charles T. Garland, um, 1874 to 1901. And you can kind of see the era that this picture, this picture is. You can really see that the way she's dressed and um, the flowers, she's just so pretty. I just really love it. This dress always reminded me of a little flower girl dress that my youngest daughter wore at um, her cousin's wedding. And it's very, very similar to that. So, what I'm going to attempt to do is, and if I mess it up, worse comes to worse, I can just flip it back to black, right? <laughs> I am going to attempt to decoupage <clears throat> some fabric over the mat. Now, I realize I don't have that much of the fabric. I've got some scraps here because I decoupaged a flower pot. I've used this on a, um, I made a basket liner and I used some scraps from that. So I don't have that much, but I'm thinking that I will probably have enough. Now, my dilemma is, okay, should I fussy cut this, these flowers and simply strategically place them on the mat? Or should I try to 
see if I have enough because the mat is not that wide. See if I have enough fabric that if I cut it appropriately, I can actually just cover the entire mat, decoupage the entire mat with this fabric. I don't know. Uh, that's what I really want to do, but my instincts tell me, my instincts tell me, to fussy cut some of the roses and place them strategically on the mat. I don't know. So, what, what keeps me from really fussy cutting is I hate to do it. <laughs> I just don't. I don't enjoy it. Um, but, I don't know. I'm going to think about it a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and um, show you what I'm going to do. Oh dear, oh dear. Decisions, decisions. Okay, this is what, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what I decided to do. I'm taking a pencil, and I'm laying the mat on top of the fabric like this and I'm just tracing around and what I'm going to attempt to do I'm not going to fussy cut the fabric I'm simply going to although this is kind of fussy oh my word <laughs> I'm going to just try to cut the fabric to fit around the mat and decoupage it on now I could press this before I do this. I suppose it would make it easier to cut, but I don't want to drag out my iron. Now normally I would be doing this at my craft table in the basement, but the lighting is not very good to film in down there. So I brought the project upstairs. And my iron is downstairs. I'm, I'm no, no, I'm not going to run down there. Okay, so I'm going to proceed with this. I've got two pieces cut, and let's see how this looks. Um, I'm winging it, which is how I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. Just so you know, I'm going to decoupage, put the, put the Mod Podge on the... Um, fabric. I'm going to lay it on some wax paper because I don't want to gunk up my table. All right. So I'll just show you how I'm going to do this first piece. Keep in mind, I don't have the, the other pieces cut yet. I have to cut two more pieces. And I don't have those cut yet. I told you I'm winging it. <laughs> now, if you don't have Mod Podge, tell you the truth, I rarely have this on hand because I usually don't buy it. Um, you can just use white glue, like school glue, and um, if and dilute it with a little water if you want to, because the school glue will dry clear. I used that for years and years and years on everything I wanted to decoupage. All right. Now let's see. I'll bring you back here. I'm not going to show you every piece, but I want to show you the, the first piece. Wax paper is awesome. It's cheap and if and you should keep it on hand because you can use it for lots and lots of stuff. Now, I'm counting. I don't want to overlap this on the back, so I'm kind of counting on it. Um, just uh, being just right and if if it's too big along the edges, I will trim it. Now I'm going to take my my brush and I'm going to use the brush on the top to kind of smooth out the wrinkles. Now, after this is done, I will go back over the top of the fabric 
with the Mod Podge. And um, also, I cut it to fit, but you see, it stretched a little bit, right? Which that's okay. So, let me um, make sure that feels like it's not quite stuck. Okay. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go over this right now with a little bit. Fortunately, this dries pretty quickly. Now, I'm hoping that the frame will hide some of my imperfections because I'm not going for perfect. <laughs> That's kind of an exercise in futility sometimes, right? Okay, so you can see there, I think you can see there, there you go. That's the top piece. Looks a little rough, but we're going to keep working it. I want to make sure that at least most of the wrinkles are out. Now, you know what? If they're not all out, that's okay. It'll just look more, um, it'll just look antiquated. <laughs> all right. All right. I've decided I'm going to try to give the, the corners a mitered look. Um, so I cut this piece of fabric, the biggest piece, uh, in half diagonally and I put some some Mod Podge on on the uh, mat itself. And I'm going to see if I can cut this in such a way that the corners look mitered. Now, if you notice where I have where I have applied the fabric, it is uh, darker. It's a different color than this because of the the Mod Podge. Now, I'm hoping I'm hoping that it will lighten up, but we we absolutely will see. I don't know. And I got out my little scraper thing to sort of give it a flatten it out. Now, I'm going to put some Mod Podge on top of here. Not here yet, but just here. And only where the mat is. I'm not putting it over the whole fabric because I'm going to be trimming this fabric off. So, let's see. Let's see how it's going to work. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Now I have these on. It looks weird, I know, but I have hope. <laughs> um, I'm going to let this dry completely because once the um, the Mod Podge dries, it's going to uh, stiffen up this fabric and it's going to make it easier to trim. Okay, um, and then I will have to figure out exactly how I'm going to do this and probably um, do my miters and make them look nice. <laughs> All right, we'll be back when it's dry. Okay, I want to show you the completed project. I'm very, actually very happy with the way this turned out. Now, <clears throat> you can see where I I mitered the corners. Now, it's not perfect, but actually it looks pretty good. Uh, and I think it certainly looks much, much better than if it were a um, just straight pieces butted up against each other. So there's the third one, or the fourth one. 
So I think it does look much, much better. Pardon the glare on the glass there, but I did want you to see how this turned out. Now, it did lighten up after it dried, but not completely. And, and that's good. I'm fine with that. Actually, at one point, I considered um, maybe staining the fabric with some coffee or tea. <clears throat> but actually, it's not a bright white. And you know what? I'm, I am perfectly fine with that. I think it looks really, really good. I tried hanging it on the wall and it looks very, very pretty. I will, I will show you that. I'll, I'll hang it up and I'll show you what that looks like. So tell me what you think about it, <clears throat> if you like it, or if maybe you would like to try this um, with maybe some matting that you have. Um, and it doesn't have to be a picture this big. It can be a picture much um, smaller than this one if you have a mat that you want to use that would be great or make your own mat and decoupage something on it all right let's go see what it looks like when it's hanging up I just wanted to show you because I forgot to mention the way that I got those mitered I actually folded there was just a tiny little edge there. Remember, I didn't glue it down to begin with. I didn't uh, put the glue on there to begin with. And the reason I didn't do that is because I figured I was going to have to fold that under so that it actually looks like a seam. See there? It actually looks like a seam. And so I did each corner. I folded each corner so that it would look nice and neat. And I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's go look at what it looks like hung up. Here we go. I'm trying to angle this so that the um, glare is not too bad on the glass in the frame. The um, art that you see to the, which would be to our left of the uh, piece I just worked on, I worked on that around Christmas time last year and uh, I did a little video on that so if you want I'll put the link down below and you can go to that and check it out if you want to um, I think this looks really really good I'm very happy with the way this turned out I think it looks pretty and the other uh, picture that I was talking about that I was pairing it with is this one here I don't really know what that one's called it's it's um a replica of the painting by Marie Cassatt, and it is um, just children on the beach. I don't know, maybe that's what it's called. I've always loved that picture. Um, and, I don't know, let's see. This is what, this is what the pictures hang behind. This is my, my chaise, and um, I just really, really love it. It's comfortable. It's a good place to read or just have a nice cup of tea and just absolutely enjoy. And um, I have to say, uh, the cats like it too. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, listen. I hope this inspires you. And if I can do it, you can do it. And you know what? Just use what you have. That's what I try to do. I shop at home, and if I feel like I want something new or feel like I want to lift up my spirits, I just look around my house, and I see what I've already got that maybe I can um, give it some new life. Okay? All right, listen, I love you. If I can do this, you can do it. You know that you can, and I hope that you will just jump in there and give it a try, okay? Okay? And as always, you just remember that little is much when God is in it. Okay? All right. Love ya. Talk to you later. Bye.